Davis and Ross were say good buddies. Okay, mm -hmm. they 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 okay. Who? Both Diddy and Ross and Cabin. They all gay. Okay? DJ Kelly, Rick Ross, and P Diddy. Yeah, they all gay. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. Cabin is a Hamas supporter. Okay. Who supporter? Hamas. 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 Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I said the wrong. No, no, no way. No way. Hamas supporter. Okay. All right. I had sex with Cassie and Sean. Basically, he would uh, he would masturbate, tell me what to do with Cassie. I had like 15 encounters, and I heard a lot. Oh, uh, hidden in plain sight. It's hidden. Uh, I think I see what you're saying. Okay. okay, how do I know this? Yeah, that's what I want to know. How do you know this? Do you know Sean Combs? Puff Daddy. Yeah. For a very long time, people have been intrigued by the lavish parties Diddy has a knack for throwing. Puff Daddy. Yeah. P Diddy, whatever you call himself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's part of what is called the boule. The, the boule is the boule is a branch of the Illuminati. Okay. okay. It's the black. But now it's slowly coming to light that some downright messed up stuff went down at those parties. This audio of Diddy allegedly getting down and dirty with Meek Mill will send chills down your spine because you can clearly hear Meek crying out in pain, not pleasure. So he's declaring that he has personal knowledge of the facts set forth within. He knows that he knows to be true and correct. And if called upon to testify as witness, I could and would competently testify there too. Uh, from September 22, 22 to November 23, he produced nine songs on his love album, Diddy's love album, as well as playing instruments. He worked at the, you know, the, the offices. He lived with Combs for months at a time, spending holidays, missing major events. He was very demanding, would often deny requests to go home. Diddy was a tough boss. I lived at his residence in LA, New York, and Miami. I also spent several weeks on a yacht he rented in, in uh, St. Martin. Virgin Islands. While living with and working with Mr. Combs, I witnessed and experienced and endured many things that went far beyond my role as a producer on the Love album. Uh, this is a key. I have hundreds of hours of video and audio recordings and photos of incidents that I detail in my first and proposed Second Amendment and complaints. So he's basically saying, this is real. Uh, stop saying it's not. Stop saying we're being sloppy. We're just trying to do it. This is not just accusations. We have proof. Uh, so, yeah, no joke. Um, Mr. Combs required that I record him constantly. He did not like to repeat himself. And I quickly learned that from observing him uh, lose his temper with his staff and family if they failed to remember something he said a day or two prior. Several occasions, Mr. Combs took my cell phone and began recording himself. It's quite possible that some of the audio recordings Lil Rod frequently mentions in his lawsuit against Diddy were actually captured in these tunnels. The likelihood that these recordings were made in such a secretive and hidden location adds a disturbing layer to the accusations. This is a gripping story. Producer Lil Rod, whose given name is Rodney Jones, has now accused Sean Diddy Combs of operating a racketeering enterprise, groping him, forcing him to engage in sexual acts with sex workers and lacing alcohol for the guests in his home, including underage girls. There's a 73 page complaint, ladies and gentlemen. Quote, throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer on the Love Album. Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to record him constantly. As a result, Mr. Jones has secured, hear this, hundreds of hours of footage and audio records of Mr. Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity, end quote. This would explain why he's so confident about winning the lawsuit against Diddy, considering the heinous acts Diddy allegedly committed against him. Justin Bieber started trending sometime last year after Cassie's lawsuit surfaced, which opened the floodgates for many shady things about Diddy to come to light. At the time, it seemed like people might have been exaggerating how messed up things were for Justin when he was around Diddy. However, with everything that's come out now, it's clear that some
something very creepy was going on. Janua Wright had a lot to say about this in her recent interview with Storm Monroe. In the interview, she referenced the disturbing footage of Justin Bieber hanging out with Odell Beckham and Trey Songz, where it appears Justin is engaging in an inappropriate act with Odell. Some fans tried to brush it off as Justin doing drugs, which is terrible in itself, because these grown men were encouraging a young person into a drug-fueled lifestyle. However, according to Jaguar, it wasn't drugs at all. It was exactly what it looked like. She pointed out Justin's wet mouth at the end of the video as confirmation. It's just a sick, sick situation. Jaguar then went on to talk about how Justin Bieber must have started down this dark path from the moment he spent those 48 hours with Diddy. The footage of Diddy promising Justin a Lamborghini and a house has caused a lot of controversy because it was taken during their supposed 48-hour session. With everything that's come out about Diddy since then, I can't even watch that video without shuddering at the thought of what Justin must have endured in the name of Diddy's mentorship. Recently, it was revealed that even the tunnels under Diddy's house had cameras, which could have captured more heinous acts happening underground. There's a good chance the video of Justin partying with Odell Beckham Jr. was recorded down there too. One of these transformative encounters happened at Diddy's famous 40th birthday party in 2009. A lavish event costing over $3 million and attended only by Hollywood's elite. Denzel Washington, known for his unmatched skill and classy presence, was among the few invited. Surrounded by people living in excess and luxury, Denzel got a unique look into Diddy's private social circle. At these parties, he likely gathered useful information about the music mogul's lifestyle and the dynamics within his close-knit group. Amid the glitz and glamour, Denzel's sharp eyes might have picked up on subtle details and interactions that revealed Diddy's true nature. The extravagant event, with its opulent decorations and A-list celebrities, probably left a lasting impression on Denzel, giving him a glimpse into Diddy's world of wealth and fame. Denzel's behavior reflected the energy and anticipation felt by everyone there. He mingled with other guests, wearing a smile that fit the occasion. However, as the night progressed, the mood inside the party shifted in an unexpected way. In the midst of all the excitement and glamour, something happened that made Denzel look visibly upset. Who could ever forget the time Denzel Washington left one of Diddy's parties in a hurry? The look on his face made it clear he had witnessed something truly horrifying at that residence. So right here, the Playboy Mansion may have had secret well, they actually have secret tunnels connecting to the homes of some of the biggest stars in the 1970s. So it's a possibility that the reason why P. Diddy actually got this particular house where he's in now is because of the possibility, because I don't know, or allegedly, because of these tunnels that were already built and that are connected to P. Diddy's home where whatever P. Diddy wanted to do, he can do freely without anybody knowing about because the tunnels are up under the house. But the real question here is how did he manage to conceal all of this for so many years? Well, technically, he didn't. The floor plan of the mansion clearly indicates that it had tunnels long before Diddy acquired it. It's alarming to think about what might have been happening in those hidden passages over the years, unnoticed by the public eye. The existence of these tunnels raises even more questions about the extent of what occurred behind closed doors. And it's just not being reported, and a lot of people are saying that P. Diddy Mabley allegedly used these tunnels for X trafficking if you know what I mean. Now, you know, this right here is very shocking to a lot of people, but like I said, the mansion was bought with the grotto and the underground swimming pool, you know, the tunnel that's up under the mansion already there. And I actually have the report that said that the mansion had, you know, uh, tunnels already in it when he bought it back in 
2014 and the report reads this. Diddy's 40 million Los Angeles house has grotto, underwater tunnel, and more, says reports. And since Diddy was allegedly using them for sex trafficking, it's quite evident why he wouldn't want the media to uncover their existence. These tunnels served as a clandestine means for him to carry out his sinister activities away from prying eyes, adding another layer of darkness to the already disturbing revelation.